Welcome back to the show. Today we have Sandra D. Robinson. At the age of 17, Sandra D. began a successful career in television as an actress with major roles on Another World, Sunset Beach, Bold and the Beautiful, General Hospital, Days of Our Lives, The Bay, and guest starred on many primetime shows and films like CSI Miami, Criminal Minds, and Two and a Half Men, among others. As founder and CEO of Charisma on Camera and author of Impact, Secrets to Powerful Personal Presence, Sandra G. Robinson is under demand as a coach, consultant, and speaker for companies, celebrities, and well-established experts to help them get what they deserve in life by naturally stepping into their most powerful self. Sandra, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, that's you have a very impressive background and bio, and I I love just having you know a conversation with you. Even just before we started recording this, we chatted for you know over thirty minutes just about stuff. Hey, we should probably be recording this. You know, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. So no, it's good. So. Welcome back. Um, you know, you you were on the radio show a while ago, and we, we covered a bunch of stuff, and I'll link that in kind of the show notes. But I I really wanted to have you back because, you know, you've you've done kind of everything that I think a lot of people fear, right? With public speaking and getting in front of people, and either whether it's off camera or on camera, and you know, you you brought up a really good point before we were talking about how. It kind of starts when you first enter a room, right? With mm-hmm. and, and so, do you maybe want to kind of start off with giving advice for people, kind of how they can, you know, be themselves and kind of act just in front of people? I think it's interesting because people will look at me and think because of my acting background um, and all the shows you rattled off. When you hear somebody else say it, it's like, holy crap! There's a lot of soap operas in there. Um, and I was very lucky to work in that industry for as, as long as I did. So, um, and very happy to step away and do what I do now. So it's a total blessing and, but very different because when I, we talk about the way you walk into a room, what I teach, I of course had to experience first. Sure. So what I discovered was hiding behind characters as an actor was a really safe place for me. And I think that's one of the reasons why I was so good at, I don't think that's that unusual. Um, for actors that to kind of hide behind any artist. I actually work with artists and and whether it's music or fine art, a lot of artists or or authors, they'll hide behind that stuff. And so um, I reached a point in my life where I had to learn how to be me and express me, not just through characters, but actually who I was. And that's why I I teach what I teach. So for me, um, you've got people that are watching this that are starting a business, thinking of starting a business, Um, really want to step out and make an impact in the world and wherever they are what people don't understand is the way you show up the way you it's a broadcast so I had somebody say to me the other day there was a a girl that was here at my ranch and she was washing the horses and some of my friends we were out of town and my friend showed up and he says well I went over to her and I started talking to her and she wasn't very nice (laughs) and I went really and maybe she had a something going on, maybe the horse had, and I think the horse she had cleaned had gone and rolled in the mud, so she was cleaning him a second time. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so she wasn't in a good mood, right? But the idea is a stranger walked up to her, and obviously it's a friendly person. They had a gate code to get into my property, right? And she broadcasted something that was unattractive. Sure. Mm, interesting. Yeah. And so their interpretation was, well, she's not very nice. And You know, my broadcast, before I learned what I teach, my broadcast was probably not very nice either, to be totally transparent. Okay, interesting. I was terrified of people. So they would recognize me as the character of the show, and they would come running up to me, and I I was very shy, and I had a really hard time with it. So sometimes I would run away. Really? Wow. (laughs) Or I, or I just would be very quick in my answers, and, and, and it was because I was scared. But what I was broadcasting wasn't really what I wanted to broadcast. I don't think the little girl that they ran up to, they said she wasn't very friendly. I don't think that girl wants to broadcast that she's a snot. Sure. <laughs> right? So what are you broadcasting? Because if you walk into an event and you're going to be meeting people that can help you with your new business you got to understand you're broadcasting something with the way you dress, with the way you walk in the room, with how you start a conversation, 
you don't wait until you find the person that you want to impress and then get impressive. Yeah, that's that's fair. So yeah. wh- how do people work on that? Because I think a lot of people are scared, right? And like I would put myself yeah. in the same boat. So yeah, well, you're doing something that you admitted scares you, it, right? Fair. Yeah, very much so. Show. And then the radio show has success. So now you're doing this, which is a step more, a step further out of your comfort zone. And how do you get better at, at broadcasting yourself the way you want to be seen? You, it, It's trial and error, but the first thing is to be conscious. Be conscious of how you show up. And one of the toughest things that you can do is to find people that you know are going to be really honest with you and say, sure. give me three words to describe me. And then hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Ask them to be honest. And one of the most brutal things that I've heard trainers like myself do, and I, I haven't done this, but I've had people that have taken a course where they walk, they all stand around, they look at this person, they look at each other, and then one by one, the people leave the room. And as they walk in the room, people write down descriptions of that person and how they perceive them. In other words, how they're broadcasting themselves. Interesting. And you'd be surprised sometimes at the way people think they're showing up and the way they actually do. So one of the things you can do, like anything, is ask for feedback, right? Um, If you're speaking, if you get up and you speak to a crowd about what you do, have little forms with two or three questions that just say, hey, here's my survey. I'd love for you to check off some things. It's anonymous. If you don't okay. make people sign their name, they'll do it. Right. And you'll see. You know, how do you, how do you come across? It's not just what are the bad things you're doing. What are the good things that you're doing? What do people really connect with? That can be as surprising as anything, too. Sure. No, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It, it, there are things that you may think, oh, I need to be so professional. I need to act corporate. But maybe you do something that, that makes everybody crack up and they see the real you for a moment. And that's what they write down as a memorable moment. And you go, oh, maybe I don't need to be so stiff. Maybe I can be me. And actually, that's usually the best thing you can be is is, is be you. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. Like I, I always love the quote, it, it, I can't remember. It's like something along the lines of like, you don't need to be professional. You just need to be passionate. And that always kind of resonated with me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's certain, of course, there's things that you yeah. you want to do. You don't want to show up dressed completely inappropriately. You don't want to swear in front of the wrong people. I mean, yeah, there's certain business etiquette that you, you kind of need to be aware of. But for the most part, yeah, if you just show up and you're passionate and you're you're eager to learn from somebody or work with somebody and when that shows yeah that gosh that gives you so much grace it really does i know that's what happened to me i mean i i was just a country bumpkin from western pennsylvania and i met some people that were influential enough to get me auditioning and and if it wasn't for them just knowing that i was passionate about what i was doing i never would have got (laughs) anywhere that's amazing oh my gosh i showed up in new york city and if you've ever been to New York City, New Yorkers are, they're, you know, they're they're pretty they're pretty stern out in the street, and they wear a lot of black. <laughs> and I mean, because it's you walk a lot, and it's it's it was kind of dirty. It's a city, so there's a lot of black. There's a lot of a somber look. And I show up from the country with my white <laughs> granny boots, my white clothes, my white skirt, <laughs> <laughs> my hair all curled like this, <laughs> and, and they just they're like, what is that? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, I was broadcasting a whole different channel when I showed up. Um, but it was the passion that gave gave him the grace, you know, or gave me the grace that uh, allowed me to have the opportunity. And there's plenty of people that, that can attest to the same thing. And so you're very, very right with that. You're so right. But when it comes to actually getting into presentations about what you do, then you have to be a little bit more prepared, sure. you know. And prepared can just be learning more about your audience. What do they need? How are you going to serve them with what you have? And and then you show up ready to do that. Okay. So what what advice would you give people to learn about their audience? Um, if they're gonna be speaking, let's just say use a couple of like, okay, for instance, here, I'm on a I'm on a show, I'm being interviewed. Sure. And one of the first things I asked you, rather than assume that you have the same audience as, as you do on your radio show, I asked. I asked the same question about who is your demographic? Who is this show for? Sure. Because it could be exactly the same. 
expect it. Or it could be, no, I'm trying something different. This is actually a whole different focus. So I need to know, you know, what are, what are the ages? What's, What's the influences that they have? What are they in need of? Because my question to you wasn't any for any other reason than I want to be able to serve as best as possible. So I can I have a wide variety of things that I can talk about, basically all around presentation, showing up, whether you're on camera, off camera, using video, presenting in front of a crowd, networking. I mean, there's a thousand different ways that I can address your audience, but I want to know what's the way that I can serve them the most. Sure. And what you gave me, I said, okay, I'm doing this series coming up about um, broadcasting and, and how you show up, whether it's your bio that you send forward to somebody that you're going to be presenting for, or whether it's what, what you wear, how you start a conversation, how you shake somebody's hand, to what you do when you walk up on stage. You know, I'd love to cover some a little bit of all of that if we could, because I'm so hungry to get this out to your people. But sure, um, I- yeah, I mean, we, we mentioned bio. Yeah, I think that's great. I was just going to ask you that. I think we we were kind of talking about that before, and I I think it's super important. So I've had this struggle just with guests on the show um, as well, but what what do you recommend to people, you know, when they are sending kind of a bio and a photo? Well, you will be asked for a bio. Even if you are brand new in your business, you're just launching it, and you're just coming into this field, whatever it is. They're going to ask for a bio. And even if you don't have a lot of credits in what you do, you don't have a lot of awards in what you do, create something that shows that passion, that shows why, what, you know, what drew you to what you're doing. You have a personal story. Maybe that's all your bio is. But a bio and a photograph, yeah, you can always have them professionally done. But, and I actually do recommend that you have somebody professionally write your bio. Or if you're a writer, at least learn how to write a good one. Because a boring bio, even though it may be heavy in credentials, is one that starts with, Mr. Jones went to such and such a college and has been in the industry for 35 years. He has won this award and that award and has three children and like, (sighs) boring, who cares? It's not entertaining, it doesn't pertain to me. I don't care if you went to Harvard, if it has nothing that I am interested in in your content, right? How am I gonna identify with you? I didn't go to Harvard. You going to Harvard doesn't mean anything to me. I'm not connecting with you emotionally whatsoever. So have a bio that, and you can get a bio for $250, $200, maybe even less, but get one that talks with your voice, that is you. So start with an anecdote, start with a story, start with a quote, start with a belief that you have that has propelled you into the field that, that you're working in. Start with something that is engaging right off the top. It's just the same as whenever you're stepping up on a stage. You want to start with something, with an anecdote, with something that's going to make people connect to you. The bio is essentially a short version of how you're going to show up. So what are you writing it? Right? So what are you broadcasting when you send somebody a bio? So if I get a bio that is boring, I would expect the person to be boring. Fair. Yep. Right? Yep. So if you're going to settle for handing me a bio that is average it's going to broadcast to me that you're okay with average. So when you're building a business, there's a few things that you, I think you need to spend a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit of money on. So if somebody wants to interview you, bring you in as a speaker, have you speak at a lunch and learn, have you speak for free. I don't care if you're speaking for free. It's an opportunity to broadcast what you're all about, but be prepared. So have a bio, have a good photo. We were talking that, you know, cell phones right now, iPhone has an HD, gorgeous HD camera, and you have all kinds of filters and things on there. So I absolutely will recommend really good photographers in several different cities. And I, I think that's a great investment. But if you just, if you don't have a headshot, if you don't have a photo of you, yeah, that is, yeah. that's good, that looks like you and has the energy that you want to relay and broadcast, take, have somebody take a bunch of photos of you, go through them all, find one that you like, fix it up, tune it, whatever you got to do with it, and then make that your photo. So if you only have one, make it a good one. Yeah, or and make sure it's not like a view at the bar or something. I find that's common. <laughs> sure it's a good one, yeah. Like, and you're not doing like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, or like a shot or something. Or like <laughs> <laughs> That's not really what you want, right? Or the super close up, you know, that, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, we don't want that. We want something that's kind of, framed like you and I are framed right now with a pleasant look on your face. Don't look stern. Don't look mean. 
don't look tough unless mm -hmm. that's your particular brand, right? Um, and if your if your brand is funny, be funny. Look look like what we would recognize you as if you walked in the room. Sure, that that's really good advice. So yeah. I, I'm curious then, what else do you tell people about when they're trying to work on kind of not necessarily like public speaking, but a lot of the show audience, you know, they have to like pitch to investors or yeah. even stand up in front of their team, right? And talk yeah. about things that are good, bad, or other about the company. So how do yeah. you, what do you tell people about getting over that fear almost? Um, there's a few different things. So first of all, if you're speaking to an audience where you're giving information about your company, you're serving them, even if it's you're pitching for their money. Okay. You're serving them because if you pitch correctly and if you really have something of value, you're going to be serving them. It's going to benefit them, right? They'll be part of something that's going to be amazing. And that's the attitude that you have to have. You don't walk in. There's something that I, I love to describe when it comes to situations like pitching to get people interested in your business or even to sign up for your business. Or And this started back in acting because a lot of actors go to an audition and they walk in with the pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me attitude. And I think out of naivete, I was so successful, especially in the beginning, because I walked in going, all right, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like I said, it, it was really more naive than ego. I, I just thought you called me in because you want me the, for the part. So here I am. I am the part. And I totally became that character because I didn't have value for myself which was a whole nother issue. But I totally became that character the moment I walked in. And because I was so committed to that, I think that's why I had success right off the bat. And it's the same thing when you're pitching for your business. You walk in and you are so committed that they are in the right place, that you are the right investment for them. That that's what you're, that's what you're there. You don't walk in going, please give me money or please become my customer. You walk in going, I'm here. I'm the best opportunity that you've seen. Let me tell you why. Yeah, yeah, it's like... Not from a big-headed place. Yeah. Just from excitement and passion and, okay, let's do this, I, right? I, yeah, I've really noticed that too. Like, if you kind of come in, um, like, if you come in almost like stern a little bit, right? Like, it's your fault if you don't pick me like, kind of attitude, right? A little bit. Yeah. Wait, that seems to work a little bit better than if you kind of come in like, oh, like kind of scared and it's interesting, I, right? I had, I had one woman say to me, she was going in to pitch a, a big company and there were other companies alongside of her that were bigger than her. She was small, small potatoes going into a big opportunity. And she said, I'm just really nervous. And I said, okay, what are you nervous about? And if she said, as you would expect, well, the other companies are so big and and I'm, 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 I said, well, what are you going to say? She goes, well, I'm probably going to walk up and go, hey, I know that I'm the smallest company that you're talking to. I'm like, mm. no. And I, I hesitate to go, and then what are you going to say? And she says, well, um, I don't know. Because I, I, I think that's a bad thing. I'm like, okay, let's reframe that. <laughs> and so, yeah, maybe you are the smallest company. So you can still start. I gave her the same start. Like you can still start saying, hey, but you're going to walk in with assertiveness and you're going to, you know, shake that person's hand. And you're going to say, hey, thank you for seeing me. I'm probably the smartest, the smallest company you're going to talk to about this. But let me tell you why that's a good thing. Totally. You, you ought to turn it into like a positive, right? Right. Yeah. Why is it a good thing? And she goes, well, because we have fewer people that, for them to call and we're more hands on and we're more. I'm like, bingo, write those down. That's where you go. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, right. You know, sit, sitting as an actress for so long at an audition, there was always somebody thinner, younger, more beautiful, bigger boobs. Like there was always something <laughs> yeah, sure. right? that you could look around and guys, same way. They could always look around and find a guy that was more muscular or taller or more chiseled. Like you can't do that. You just have to walk in and say, here's why I'm awesome. Yeah, <laughs> and, no, that's good advice. But yeah. you have to come from a legitimate place. You can't walk in when you have nothing and just spew forth, you know, crap. You, you have to have, you have to do your homework and be, know how to serve them. That's when I say you have to know who you're talking to. And if you know that, then you can walk in and say, here's three reasons why you, you should be working with me. And it's look them in the eye. And I, I have a lot of, especially younger people that have a really difficult time with that. Yep. Eye contact is huge shake firmly 
handshake one, two, three times, take your hand off. I mean, people that shake with a weak handshake or a bone crusher, that that handshake is actually a very intimate moment. Sure. And that tells somebody a lot about you. So handshake like you are confident, like you are their best buddy in the whole world and you're going to make them a ton of money. That's how you handshake. Sure. That's good advice. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and so I, I'm curious then, like, obviously you, you kind of mentioned a little bit earlier about a lot of this is just like trial and error and practice, right? Like it's, the more you do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think the thing is to like almost practice with people you're comfortable with. And yeah. at least the thing that I found is doing the show is I try to sometimes have people on the show that I almost find intimidating because it pushes me out of my comfort zone, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I have people that come to me for interview training, you know, and they're doing shows like yours and they've got somebody that intimidates them and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to say. Well, that person, even if they are the tops in your industry, they're, they're a person. Yeah. I mean, they, they may, if you approach them with an absolute authentic curiosity, so if you're interviewing somebody or even if you're, you're going in to meet somebody that could be a potential peg in your ladder just to where you want to go, approach them like a human being, not like a peg in a ladder to where you need to go because they'll smell that a mile away. Yep. And, and be authentic about it. If that person is more successful than you, then look at them and go, I wonder... And what do you wonder? Do you wonder who inspired them? Do you wonder what their first job ever was like because they're successful now? What, where did they actually start? What was the worst job they ever had? What was the best day they ever had? What was the worst day they ever had? I mean, what is it that you most want to know for real? And ask them. And if it's not a question that they've heard before, if it's something that's legitimate, legitimate curiosity on your part and has them talking about who they really are, that's one of the things that we were saying that a good interviewer can make connections with people that it's not just, Oh, I have so-and-so's number, but so-and-so will actually pick up the phone when you call them. That's, that's making a connection and that's how you do it. So whether you're interviewing like you're doing or going into an interview or meeting somebody that can help you in your business, it's, it's really about building that rapport and building that relationship. Sure. No, no, that's great. And I think that's, that's really good advice, but we're kind of coming to the end of the show. So maybe let's close the show with where people can find you online and get more information yeah. about you. Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, there's two places. Most people will go to charisma on .com. Okay. Um, and there's, if you want to get on camera or speaking, that's probably the best place that you can go. There's a lot of there's free training on there. You can sign up, get free training. In fact, I send out one minute weekly tips every single week. They're just one minute, so not a big, not a big commitment. Everybody's got a minute. Everybody's got a minute, right? And with those, I'll I'll give you little insider tips and things that people don't know. And when you don't know what you don't know, you can kind of sometimes come across broadcasting the wrong thing. So I want to help you guys broadcast um, exactly what you want to whenever you're you're showing up in the world and trying to make it to that next. Neville of your business. So Charisma on Camera is a good place to go. And you can find me on any social media under Sandra D. Robinson. And SandraDRobinson.com is my personal um, website. So any of those, look for Charisma on Camera, Sandra D. Robinson. Connect with me on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, um, even Wait. Google+. Plus. Is anybody on Google+, Plus I, anymore? I don't even know. Uh, every once in a while I pop in, I open the door and go, hello, anybody here? Kind of echoes back. But, uh, but yeah, you, you'll find me out there. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Sandra, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be on the show again. And, you know, hopefully we can do this again soon. And uh, I look forward to keeping in touch with you. Awesome. All Thanks, right. Kevin. We'll talk soon. Okay. Bye.